as you see, there's a little poll here. So um, it looks like a majority of people so far have been whole food plant-based, which is great because we're gonna ask for um, some of your engagement during the session here. Um, we are going to use the chat function. So if you're familiar with um, Zoom, the chat function is at the bottom of the screen where it has like a sort of a black bar and it says chat. If you click on that, we're going to have you use that to, you know, type in your questions, um, engage with each other and, um, and connect with each other as well. So, so please use that chat function that you see. And we'll start in about a minute here. My screen just has uh, the picture sweet pea with a picture of a dish on. Is that what I should be seeing now? Yes, David, that's what you should be seeing. Okay. Are you on, are you. You on your phone? I, I'm on an iPad. On an iPad, okay. Yeah, I have not seen what the screen looks like on an iPad, but I'm pretty sure you still have the same functionality. But yeah, yes. initially I was initially I was watching you, and then all of a sudden now it's mm -hmm. uh, it's just a picture of the uh, just mapping your your meal plan. Right, right. Yeah, we okay. um, I did a, a screen share. Okay. So because we're going to be presenting, so we're going right. to share the screen. So um, did everybody get the handout that we sent um, last night along with the Zoom link? Great. I hope you had yes. the chance to print that out and follow along. Um, there are obviously spaces for you to, to um, put information on there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it off here. So Welcome, um, thank you for joining us today for our monthly session titled Mapping Your Meal Plan. Um, we were off a month on our monthly seminars, but we're, um, we're gonna be continuing this in the coming months. So stay in touch with us via social media or sign up for our email list um, via our website, or you can email us and we can also add you on the email list as well. Um, before we get started, I'd like to go through some housekeeping items. So we do ask that um, everyone mute themselves. Um, we are recording this session, so that way we can keep any background noise to a minimum. Also, if you have questions, please use the chat function that you see either at the top of your screen or at the bottom of your screen to type in any questions. Again, engage with each other. Um, and we also did send out the, um, the handouts last night. And if you did not receive the handout, we'll post the link here in the chat box so you have it. Um, we do want you to be engaged. So for those of you that have been whole food plant-based, um, we're going to be asking, um, you know, what are some of your go-to websites and resources for, for everyone to, to share? So in our um, close to an hour together, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna go through introductions. And so that way, in case you haven't um, met us, you know who we are. We're, we'll briefly cover what whole food plant-based eating is. We'll gauge your readiness to prepare and transition into meal planning. We'll touch on each step in the process of how to meal plan. And then um, you, you'll receive resources um, like the handout to write on. And then lastly, we'll open it up for questions. So it looks like a majority of people here have been plant-based for about three years or more. So that's great, welcome. And then um, pretty good spread of everybody um, across the board. Okay, so um, my name is Jen Nguyen. I'm Director of Nutrition at Sweet Pea Plant-Based Kitchen. I completed my undergrad in nutrition and dietetics from Cal State Long Beach and completed my dietetic internship at Cornell University. Uh, to keep up with my clinical skills, I do work um, per diem at Highland Hospital. Shortly after joining the Sweet Pea team, I completed the Plant-Based Nutrition Certificate Program through the Center of for Nutrition Studies. Growing up, I typically ate, you know, several vegan meals um, and for religious reasons, plants 
um, were and still are a huge part of my life growing up today. Um, but, you know, fast food and processed meats were, were also too. So my journey to whole food plant-based is ongoing and I still make a conscious effort to eat plant-based primarily for environmental and health reasons. And I'm gonna go ahead and let Kendra introduce herself here. Hi everyone, I'm Kendra Piasetsi. I'm also a registered dietitian and a certified health education specialist. I've been whole food plant-based for about 10 years. Um, prior to that, I was a vegetarian um, starting in high school. I've worked in a variety of settings as a dietitian, um, a clinical setting in a hospital, long-term care, um, and community nutrition through cooperative extension service and for colleges and universities. But I, I really enjoy working for Sweet Pea and helping people on their, their whole food plant-based journey. So before we talk about what a whole food plant-based diet is, I think it's important that we talk about the word diet. Usually when we think of diet, it, it calls to mind some um, negative connotations that we associate with it. We tend to think of um, something that's going to be a short-term quick fix, like a fad diet, something that's going to take away all of your favorite foods and force you to starve for a certain amount of time. Or it's something that a dietitian in a hospital or a doctor puts you on, like a diabetic diet or a low sodium diet. But when we talk about a whole food plant-based diet, we're referring to the foods and beverages that you regularly consume. Um, we know that if we follow the, the standard American diet, um, that form of habitual nourishment will lead us towards disease. If we're eating a diet that's comprised mostly of plants, um, that form of habitual nourishment will lead us towards less risk for disease. So let's talk about whole food plant-based eating and, and what it is. We tend to, um, First, think about the things that we can't have. So of course, we're, we're not going to include any sort of animal foods. We're not going to include meat, poultry, eggs, um, seafood, dairy, or dairy products. And something that's pretty surprising for a lot of people is we don't include processed foods, including, including oil. If you think about an olive in its whole form or an avocado in its whole form, it hasn't been processed in any way. But when we um, go through the refinery process to, to get oil, it becomes a highly processed food. So I like to focus on the things that we can continue to include um, because there are so many different types of fruits and vegetables. Um, we can eat any fruit or vegetable. We want to focus on um, fruits and vegetables in their whole form. Um, so we don't want any sort of juices or any sort of like fruit gummies or things like that. I have a six and 10 year old. So um, I think about gummies and how they're made from fruit. Um, whole grains are another, another food that we would include on a whole food plant-based diet. So things like quinoa and farro and uh, brown rice. We include nuts and seeds. We want these to be unsalted, dry roasted or raw. And legumes and beans of all sorts. Of all sorts. And then of course, minimally processed foods like a plant-based milk. Okay, so a very common question that I get from, from clients, and I'm sure Jen does too, is what's the difference between a vegan and then someone who follows a whole food plant-based diet? Um, but something that you might not realize is that there are many different types of vegetarians out there. Growing up, I was a lacto-ovo-vegetarian, meaning that I included milk and I also included eggs. There are also pescatarians who include fish, politarians who include chicken, and then we have vegan and whole food plant-based. Um, a whole food plant-based diet is vegan, but not all vegans follow a whole food plant-based diet. If you think about Oreos and potato chips and all the really popular burgers right now that you can get at fast food places, um, they are vegan, they are plant-based, but they wouldn't be considered a whole food because of all the processing that they have undergone. So we wouldn't include those on a whole food plant-based diet because of the processing. So as you're transitioning, it's really important to think about your purpose. Um, without intention and intrinsic motivation, it's going to be challenging to talk yourself into meal planning because it does take time. And uh, we have 
we have several clients here on the session today, and I think they can relate to when we say it takes time. Um, they understand that it really does take steps and it takes effort to make sure that you're, you're planning. So we, we like to always go back to your purpose. Um, if you're familiar with the self-determination theory, this chart is looking at autonomy, which is a construct of that theory. Autonomy is when you are in control of your life behaviors and goals. It's up to you. It's your choice. So this is where intrinsic motivation allows for long lasting and sustainable changes. Um, this comes when you start researching on your own, reading out of enjoyment because you're curious and um, there's some inherent satisfaction out of that. So other, other um, ways of intrinsic motivation might be you sharing with your family and friends, um, you know, what you're doing because you're excited for yourself. So once you've defined why it's important to you and you have a sense of purpose, it's important to have other areas circled or checked off to ensure you also stick with this. Relatedness and competence are the other two constructs found in the self-determination theory. Relatedness is important because as human beings, we do need to experience a sense of belonging and a sense of connection with other people. If you're, if you feel as an, you know, if you feel like you're an outlier um, for, for eating a certain way, it's really important to find that community, that support group that you have so you can understand and feel connected with other people. Um, because eating is a huge part of our lives. We do it every day and we do it to live. Um, feeling cared for and by others is important. So for example, um, encouraging your family to help with grocery shopping, picking recipes out with you, um, having friends share recipes with you and exchanging ideas, maybe exercising with you. And then the final construct is competence. So this is where you gain mastery and control of your own lives and your environment, such as giving 100% in everything you do, learning, applying, just as you are learning today and hopefully will apply as soon as possible. Um, this is really what competence is. So it also includes reflecting on what's working and also deflecting that negative pressure that might be um, surrounding you at any point. The art of reflecting does turn an experience into a learning event and that's when we tend to stick with it more. So I'm gonna jump into why meal planning. So um, in this process, we're talking about meal planning in terms of meals, um, what meals you're eating versus a cookie cutter program. So in the Sweet Pea program, we do provide a meal plan. It's very structured up front. However, we start to allow for flexibility with you using your own meals, um, finding your own recipes, um, you know, social events, going out to eat with friends and family. So um, that's the difference. When you can focus on um, planning your meals, um, what you're doing is you're going to be eating foods um, and focusing on the foods that you eat versus the numbers. You're also more likely to understand and be in tune with how your body's feeling when you're eating a particular meal. So when you're thinking about intuitive eating or mindful eating, um, that is a part of that practice as well. Um, when we're also meal planning, we can also improve our food choices. So avoiding drive throughs um, and encouraging more whole foods and more nutrient dense foods versus processed foods or the ultra processed foods. Um, so I just wanna talk a little bit about those um, cookie cutter meal plans that many health coaches and wellness coaches out there might be selling. Um, we just encourage you to be careful, you know, especially if you're paying for those because while it's a good start, um, they're not sustainable. And most times they're very rigid. They'll tell you to eat the exact same thing. Um, it doesn't account for your personal schedules, um, doesn't account for kids, for getting sick navigating around travel and social events. So, um, you know, make sure that if you are looking for meal plans, if you are, that there is some sort of structure, but it also allows for some flexibility as well. So steps to start meal planning. So the first step of course, is to pick your meals, um, ask yourself, what do you wanna eat? This will gradually get easier over time because you'll start to know what like you start to identify what recipes or what cookbooks um, are your favorites and what flavors 
um, you know, best suit your palate. So recipes online are great because there are reviews that can guide you. Additionally, if you're someone who, um, who likes to go online, I would encourage you to look into the Plan to Eat app. Um, this app keeps all of your recipes inside of the app. Um, it'll create grocery lists for you. It'll allow you to plan out your meals during the week. You can set notifications for grocery shopping, for prepping. Um, so it's it's a great app if you're someone who likes to search for recipes online. You can also share recipes with other people. Um, so I think it's a, a, a great app to use if you're interested in using that. Um, when you're picking your meals, also consider grab-and-go meals. These are great options. Um, Wegmans has a few options and a lot of grocery stores. If you're not in the area, a lot of grocery stores will offer, you know, pretty healthy, convenient options that you can make it quick. So convenient options are okay to use. For example, Wegmans carries their um, organic uh, grain bowls. Um, I think it's their baby greens and ancient grain bowls that they have. Um, they also do have like our garbanzo bean chick chickpea burger. So that's another option too. Um, consider the convenience of some home cooking kits that can offer, you know, fresh ingredients. They're all that are all pre-measured for you. And then you can modify, you know, you can always take a cooking kit or get a cooking kit and then um, add your own veggies to it, add a salad to it and keep it simple. And then of course, I'm gonna mention our sweet pea meals. Um, they are prepared fresh on a weekly basis. We do use a lot of local produce and the freshest ingredients. Um, there, um, you can order a la carte. So if you want to just use a few meals during the week, that is also an option too. And orders are due today. So if you wanna give us a try, um, do place your order today. And if you haven't ordered from us, um, use the code FIRSTTIME15 um, for 15% 15 off your first order. Um, second, uh, second step here is to create a grocery list. Again, if you dread creating a grocery list, um, the Plan to Eat app does create a grocery list for you with all the recipes that you um, picked out. So use the app if, if you're not someone who likes to spend too much time meal planning. Um, also, don't forget to include staple ingredients that you always like to have on hand. Kendra's going to talk a little bit more about, you know, some um, pantry staples um, that we both keep in our, our pantries and, you know, people who have who are whole food plant based. Um, you can also, if you have any ingredients or special ingredients that you like to keep on hand, please put that in the chat boxes, chat box as well. Um, step three is to separate your cooking tasks, your grocery tasks into different time blocks during the day. So um, I like to do mine in two to three days, just so it doesn't seem so daunting because when you schedule a full day to meal prep, um, and you're working Monday through Friday, it's like you don't really have a weekend. So, you know, Sunday meal prep, um, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not with that program. I'm more of a meal prep a little bit every day and still enjoy my Sunday. <laughs> Um, so if you're splitting it into three days, I would encourage you to, um, on day one, pick a day where you can pick your meals, create a list. This does get easier over time because the recipes that you pick can be repeated. And so you may, um, down the line, just need to grocery shop, shop on, you know, your first day and then prep on your third day and cook. So day two, grocery shop, prep a few easy things. I like to um, measure out my spices and, um, you know, make my broth ahead of time if I'm using any of those things or peel garlic and keep those in containers just to make it easy. And then the day where I'm actually cooking, I just throw everything together and cook it and it makes, makes it a lot more manageable. Um, step four is use a rotating menu. So Kendra's going to go in detail about using a rotating menu. Um, but again, this is going to help you save some time. So, um, so listen in when Kendra's going to, when Kendra starts sharing on that rotating menu. So steps to start picking your meals. So this, there's um, quite a bit of information here. Um, so several things, you can always start off with a fresh template or you can start off with where you're at now. A fresh template does take a lot more work and a lot more effort. Um, 
the easier route and what Kendra and I typically will encourage people is to improve on some of your current options. Um, that's a much easier transition and that's how we transition some of our clients. Um, you know, if, if they were starting to transition into a whole food plant base, for example, um, you can start off with recipes that you're already using. If you have a pasta dish, for example, instead of using, um, you know, the regular pasta, or the non-whole wheat pasta, use whole wheat pasta, um, it's higher in fiber, higher in nutrients. Um, you can make your own sauce or buy a low sodium sauce, um, incorporate more veggies into the pasta. Those are all really substantial improvements in a meal and they do make a really big difference um, if you continue and stay consistent with that. Another example is if you're doing sweet potatoes with beans and rice, you know, ask yourself, what else can you do to make it more colorful, more nutritious? So examples might be adding a, you know, some shavings of beets to that, adding some roasted asparagus or green beans, or doing maybe a small side of corn to, to sprinkle on top. So, so things like that. So keep it, keep it simple and keep it manageable for yourself. Um, once you've started making changes to your everyday meals, then, you know, that's when I would say, you know, start with not one new recipe during the week and consider starting off with soups because soups are very easy to use and they freeze well, so you can make bigger batches. Um, lots of pasta dishes and sauces also freeze well too, so consider making bigger batches of your meals. Um, I like to also use theme days when I'm helping clients plan out their own menu for the week. Um, this is in the event that, you know, recipe websites, cookbooks can be very overwhelming. So if it helps for you to have themed days, I would highly recommend using that. So for example, a salad-based day, Asian-inspired recipes, Mexican-inspired, you can do a pasta and noodle day, a leftovers night, a crock pot or pressure cooker night. So those are just some examples. So you really can, you know, create your own theme depending on what your current, um, current schedule, eating schedule looks like. Um, another tip is keep breakfast and snacks consistent and vary up your lunches so you have variety throughout the week because oftentimes you can mix and match a lot of your options for lunches and dinners to make it a different meal. And these are recipe resources. So for those of you that have been um, whole food plant-based, um, I'm going to encourage you to share some other recipe websites or cookbooks that you'd like to share with other people. Um, you know, I, I understand that they're not there aren't a lot of whole food plant-based recipes, but it can be very easy to replace oil in a lot of these recipes and cookbooks by using vegetable broth, um, you know, some some wines, um, miso paste. So please feel free to share your your favorite recipes or cookbooks in the chat box here. And these are all listed on the handout as well. So you can actually, if you have it digitally, you can actually click and it'll take you directly to these recipe websites. All right, so one way to make meal planning a lot easier to, is to make sure you have a, a fully stocked pantry. It cuts down on the number of ingredients you need to purchase. And if there's ever a time where you haven't made a plan or your plan isn't going to work, you can really easily throw together a meal similar to, the, to what Jen mentioned, like a, a whole wheat pasta with, with beans and, and veggies and, and different spices. So I just wanna share with you some, some common staples. Um, we wanna have a variety of spices and condiments. Um, nutritional yeast is a really common ingredient in whole food plant-based cooking. Uh, you wanna make sure that it's been fortified with vitamin B12 and it's used a lot to give um, foods a, a cheesy sort of flavor. Miso paste and other fermented foods are also a really good pantry staple. Um, these contain uh, healthy bacteria for our gut, which helps to improve our mood. It helps to uh, boost our immune system. So we want to look for naturally fermented foods. Vinegars are on there, a whole variety of vinegars. Soy sauces, we want to make sure that we're looking at um, soy sauces that are low sodium. You can also use the liquid aminos and coconut aminos and a variety of spices, especially turmeric. Turmeric has been shown time and time again to reduce inflammation in our body. So if that's a concern for you, it really should be a concern for all of us. We want to look for ways to incorporate more turmeric into our diets. We also want to have a variety of dry goods on hand. 
So beans, for example, you can also use canned beans, lentils, grains, nuts and seeds, whole wheat flours, like a whole wheat pastry flour or a whole wheat white flour, and whole wheat pastas. When we look at canned or jarred goods, we want to have a variety of tomatoes because these are really easy to, to use for a soup. Again, we want these to be low in sodium. So whole tomatoes, diced tomatoes, tomato paste, coconut milk, artichoke hearts, and Kalamata olives. We want to have things in our refrigerator and our freezers as well. So chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds. These are high in essential, in essential fatty acid, alpha linoleic acids. So we want to try to include those each day. We want to also have plant-based milks, so unsweetened plant-based milks, and frozen fruits and veggies. Um, frozen fruits and veggies have been picked at their peak of ripeness and um, frozen right away. So if you think about foods that have traveled uh, a long ways to get to your grocery store, um, they've started to lose some of their nutritional value. So we don't want to discount frozen fruits and veggies as long as they don't have added sauces or anything like that. And then a common um, request from clients is, what, we, what can we have for snacks? So we wanna look at popcorn, popcorn kernels, air popped popcorn, nuts like I mentioned, um, but again, this is going to be um, unsalted, dry roasted or raw nuts, um, oil-free crackers, dried fruits, nuts and, nut and seed butters, and um, Jen and I had to include dark chocolate. Okay, so let's talk about rotating menus. Um, this can seem a little daunting and it is time intensive to begin with, but eventually it, it really pays off and saves you a lot of time. And um, you want to come up with, with menus and rotating them so that you can um, quickly have a, a list of ingredients that you need for each week and eventually not have to spend so much time having to plan and look for recipes. Um, so this really helps to um, make the meal planning process a lot more efficient. So like Jen said, instead of having to on um, day one look for recipes, you can skip right over that and go to grocery shopping and meal prepping. Um, and then this will also save you money. So rather than walking around the grocery store and wondering um, what you want to make for dinner that day or that week, you'll have a plan. So if you do something like um, Instacart or you um, pick up at the curb, that also can save you time and money as well so that you're not tempted to, to buy things that aren't on your list. Okay, now we want to first think about how often we want to change the menu. Um, Jen had mentioned that sometimes when you get a meal plan, it's the same foods over and over again. And while that can be tempting because it is so easy, it doesn't allow you to um, get the full spectrum of vitamins and minerals that you can get from eating a wide variety of foods. So we wanna be sure that we have at least two or three weeks worth of menus and then we rotate them. We can always add new menus and then have four weeks worth and five weeks worth, so we wanna rotate them. Um, the number of recipes you make will det be determined by how much you like to cook, but also by the number of people that you're going to be cooking for. So if there are two to three people that you're cooking for, you can think about one to two recipes a week, four to six people, three to four recipes a week. Um, you can always increase the number or increase the amount um, to be able to, to have some that you can save for, for future meals. Okay, so we need to spend time looking for recipes. And this really can be daunting, like Jen said, because there are so many recipes out there. If you do a search for whole food plant-based recipes or pull out all of your cookbooks um, and think about going through all of them, it's, it can be very overwhelming. So using those theme days, like Jen mentioned, having a pasta night, having a, a taco night, um, having an Asian night, that really helps to limit the recipes and the types of recipes that you're looking for. Um, having two small kids, it's important for me to include them in the meal planning process too, because I want them to be excited about what we're going to be eating and to um, uh, ease the any picky eaters um, meal times. Um, and then again, um, having a list of our staples, um, making sure that we're um, including fruits and veggies each week and to keep it fresh by including um, new fruits and veggies. You might even think about um, having seasonal menus so that you're using um, fruits and veggies when they're in season. And if you're looking for any specialty ingredients, I highly suggest you find those first before finding the rest of the ingredients for that, for that recipe. Um, you want to do that at least a day or two before you start cooking so you make sure you have everything you need. 
Then I had mentioned um, working with clients and helping them to find recipes. This is an example of how we help clients to, to look for recipes and come up with their menus. Um, we have them look for different types of roasted veggies each week um, or soup. Um, we'll have them look for a grain or a legume dish and then different types of main entrees. So here in week one, you can see it was a pasta-like dish. In week three, it's a casserole-like dish. You're fine, Jen. <laughs> um, in week four, we have a, a veggie-based dish. And we always want to make sure that we have um, beans on hand, um, salad items, cut up veggies, and, and oil-free salad dressing. And here's some different examples of some of the, the recipes we've utilized in the past um, based on having roasted veggies or a, a grain or a legume dish. And we'll share these with everyone too. And main entrees and soup recipes. Yeah, and all of those, again, all of those recipes that you see on the screen, they're also a part of the handout. The easiest way to access them will be to open up the PDF that we sent last night, and then you can actually click on those links and it will directly link you out. So we've already, you know, sort of developed a meal plan for you. It's just making sure that you now um, execute on them, which is... Um, which is up to you. So that's why we go back to your purpose. So I'm gonna talk briefly about um, the prepared meals here, um, specifically with sweet pea. So we talked about convenience options earlier. Um, you know, we have people that join our program because they are looking for the convenience option. People are li either living alone, um, they're either working full time, they have a family. And so the convenience option is is again it's it's it works it's suitable as long as you can find um, a meal plan that that is convenient healthy delicious option for you so i'm going to share a little bit about sweet pea and here's and how you're going to use our and how you can use our meals so um, the first step in using any pre any prepared meals or convenient option is to identify gaps where a meal service or a cooking kit can offer you the convenience of not having to plan so um, that might mean um, looking at days throughout the week where you might, you know, um, I have clients who play sports um, at night or they have a late schedule or meetings that they have to host on certain days. So if you know that those are days where you don't have time to cook, I would encourage you to potentially look up um, the sweet pea meals and incorporate one or two meals a week. And we'll talk about how that could look like in a week for you. Um, the other other thing is um, you want to ensure that you account for busy schedules. So just as I mentioned, um, you know, if if you're retired, maybe you are volunteering. So that's still a busy schedule. So don't feel like you have to cook because you're retired. You can still rely on the meals from time to time if you need to. Um, our meals you can order a la carte. Okay, so you can order one or two meals a week. You don't have to subscribe to a meal plan. However, if you do want to, you can. Um, we do have um, different meal plans available. So six, nine, 12, and 18 meal plans. And if you want, you know, if you're curious in terms of how many meals to order, we have clients who will jump on our, um, our four-week program. It's a combined program that includes meals and also nutrition coaching where you'll get guidance from a dietitian. So we have several clients here that are on our maintenance program and so several clients who have done our program before. And, you know, by, by the time that you complete the program, you have a pretty good understanding of what is realistic for me to prepare in a week with the schedule that I have. And some people might choose to do, you know, three or four sweet pea meals a week, and they might do um, one or two recipes on their own, which is perfectly fine. Um, the meals are there to offer you variety, provide you with convenience, and potentially even um, spark up some creativity for you as well. Um, so this is a sample. Um, week menu using um, two to three, depending. So um, the, the two to three recipes, so two recipes, if you were using two recipes, would be the mushroom quinoa pilaf and the pasta puttanesca. If you only wanted to make those two recipes, your roasted veggies can be frozen veggies or steamed veggies. So as you can see here, this has um, those recipes kind of split out throughout the day with different side options, like salads with beans, which are simple. You can buy a bag of salad or a salad 
kit at the grocery store, um, get a can of beans, rinse it out. Rinsing it out actually um, reduces the sodium by about 40%. Um, so rinse the beans, or if you end up making your own batch of beans with dried beans, you can always freeze those as well and always have a stock of that. As Kendra mentioned, you know, your, your staples in the pantry or in the freezer. Um, as you can see here, the dishes are sort of spread out through the week. Um, this is using two to four sweet pea meals and about two soups. So there's there's variety here. You um, There's variety in your, your days. If you go out to eat, you can also input that there. So this is an easy, you know, template that I created on Word document seven, you know, seven days during the week with four rows. You can do that for your, your weekly meal plan as well. And then this is a sample using poor recipes. So cooking a little bit more, maybe using less sweet pea meals, maybe you're using two to three sweet pea meals. Um, so this includes, um, well, three to four recipes. So this includes the pasta puttanesca, um, the cauliflower alfredo, um, with spaghetti squash and the mushroom quinoa pilaf. So this can be a rotating menu here. So say in the first um, week one, you end up um, just making those two homemade recipes and you rely a little bit more on the sweet pea meals. The next week you, you, know, you wanna repeat that menu and you add one new recipe, which is a cauliflower alfredo, you order less sweet pea meals. So that's an example of how a rotating menu can work for you. Again, you know, Kendra had mentioned to start off with maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks, and then start adding new recipes in. So then you start, you, you continue building on your rotating menu and finding recipes that you enjoy. Um, so if you would like further assistance with meal planning and would like to meet with a dietitian to determine, you know, what are the appropriate amount of meals to order per week, we would be happy to set up some time to meet with you. Just complete our online inquiry form and we'd be happy to meet with you um, at any point. So um, to end, we'd like to summarize some points to take home with you. Um, Revisit your purpose for wanting to meal plan. If it's about weight loss, it may be short term, but you know if you can determine on a deeper level why weight loss is important, it will provide you with that intrinsic motivation. Um, things like improving your health, preventing risk of disease, giving you confidence and choice in how you feel, and the relief of you know, not having to think about what you want to eat is also, um, I think, a huge, huge um, relief for most people and a stress reliever. reliever. Um, remember to schedule an appointment with yourself because you do matter and um, you should be a priority in your life. Um, I know moms, nurses typically have a hard time, teachers too typically have a hard time um, listening to this advice, but this is the best advice that we can give you is putting you um, on your schedule and scheduling those appointments for, for yourself. Always remember that if you're short on time, there's there are always those backup meals that you have available, like sweet pea meals, the convenient options, um, you know, homemade frozen burger patties, as long as they're oil-free, um, or even store-bought oil-free grain bowls, et cetera. So um, that concludes our session for today. So we'd like to open it up to questions here. So if you're not familiar with using the chat function, you can also go ahead and mute yourself and we can go ahead and um, open it up. There's about, it looks like 16 people here. So we can definitely open it up for any questions that you have and you can, you don't have to raise your hand. You can just speak out loud, any questions? And you will need to unmute yourself, so don't be shy. Yes, David. Um, I was. Uh, this was very, very interesting presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I noticed on the handout, where it gives a sample uh, on under my recipes for each week. There are three elements. There's the roasted veggies, for example, grains, mm -hmm. and main dish entree. Does that mean that? What we should structure meals uh, so that it has each each of those three elements to it. Yeah, you want three elements, three of those elements in a week. So those numbers under each of those things, like the roasted veggies, those are just right. examples of different recipes that you can right. put in there. So um, for you, David, but that would be that's per meal. 
In other words, each meal would have three of these three elements in it. Um, well, it would have a combination depending on what you're doing. So if you're doing right. a main entree dish that already has a whole grain component to it um, and it doesn't have a veggie component, you would want to add a veggie component to that right. meal. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, um, because some, some main entree recipes will have all of the components, the soups and the grain dishes there. You can really mix and match those however you right. like. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. I, I have a question about ordering from Sweet Pea. Um, I work in a school district and I got a gift certificate for Sweet Pea and I've been waiting till the weather cooperates <laughs> to be able to get out there on Sunday. So when I order um, a la carte to start, I can just enter the gift certificate information or, okay. Yes, you'll just enter that in the, the gift card code area. And then um, we also deliver to Catherine. I don't know where you are exactly. I'm out, in, I'm out in Wayne County in Williamson. Okay. Um, you know, once you put in your zip code, um, you might be able to see whether or not we deliver in that okay. area. I, I know we have had some clients in that area before. Yeah, I, I, know, I know you do some things out in a neighboring school district as well. So, okay, excellent. Thank well, you. Great. Yeah, we're excited for you to try it. Yeah, I think it's my goal today. <laughs> Good. Um, anyone else have questions? No? Eileen, do you want to, we have several clients on here. Do you guys want to share your experience with Sweet Pea? No, Barbara, you guys, if you guys have watched TV, Barbara's on our commercials. So she, she is a real client. <laughs> <laughs> She's been with us for over a year now. And Eileen has also just hit her one year anniversary with us too. So Eileen has been using our meals for quite some time now. Uh, as, absolutely. It's, it's just a wonderful program. So I think I've, um, I've unmuted, but, um, and it mixes where I can, I play with recipes, but I like recipe. I like cookbooks. So I'll find things and, um, and try them and my pantry is getting more full. There's, there's definitely a lot of shopping to do in the very beginning with the different flowers and things like that. Um, but it's, it's been fun and it's interesting and playing around with spices has been healthy too and great success. So for both weight and cholesterol and energy and all the things you hope for for, um, for healthy eating, whole food plant-based is I've, I've been able to uh, realize it. So great. And this is wonderful because again, planning for the week is a bit of a challenge for me. So <laughs> this is a good outline and you've given some very nice. Yes. Thank you. Good. You're welcome, Eileen. Hi, I have one other oh. oh, yes. Go ahead, Catherine. Um, this afternoon, I'm, I'm leading uh, a 20 adults that are participating in the lift project, which is kind of a mindfulness, positive messaging kinds of, and this next coming week is on healthy eating. Do I have permission to share some of the websites and documents that you sent us in PDF form yes. with that group? Yes, okay. please. Our mission okay. is to spread plant-based awareness. So that means you get to be a part of our mission too. So yes, please yeah, share. I mean, our, our, our district has been very active in the whole food plant-based challenges for a number of years. So this will be an Great. extra resource that they'll be happy to receive. Great. Good. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Barbara? Yes, I just want to say congratulations to Eileen. Good job. One year. <laughs> Getting into the spices. I'm 16 months, no cooking, and sweet peak. As long as the chef keeps cooking, I'm going to accept his food. So I'm a, a retired person that does not want to cook. I just want to receive it. It's healthy, and um, I've lost quite a bit of weight. I have to stop the process, really, because I didn't expect to be where I am now, but. Um, it's a good thing. So Catherine to you, welcome. And I hope you spread the word because it's a great, it's a great company, great system. And the chef is uh, top notch. You, you, you would be astounded at his specials. Oh, I know. I mean, we've had their muffins and, and pastry, you know, sweet things out here for superintendent conference day. So I know it's yummy. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. But thank you, Jen and Kendra. Thank you, Barbara. 
Anne, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you want to say anything? Oh. <laughs> Anne. Anne. <laughs> Anne. Yeah. Is Anne there? Yeah. I've been kind of off and on. Um, I got overwhelmed with work. Um, it was hard enough to get up and get going because I only work a few months of the year. So I'm trying to get back into the program and ordered some food last week. My problem is picking it up. I, I'm busy this weekend. I'm going camping. So where am I going to you know, how are we going to order this week? And so I'll have to wait till next week and then it'll all be mushrooms next week. So then I got to wait till the next week. So, so I got to learn how to, I got to do it myself more. So. Well, and um, when are you getting back? Because we can also meet you at the kitchen too. I don't live too far from there and I can always meet you at the kitchen too, to pick up your food on Monday or, or Tuesday. Well, I'm going to be gone, but we can also coordinate with Mike and Chef Brian, so. Yeah, Sunday is so hard, but um, I, I like the food. I, you know, off and on, and I'm not a mushroom person, so mm -hmm. it's been a struggle, but it's okay. I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah, good. Just uh, kind of fell off the wagon with work, but trying to get back there. Good. I didn't fall off totally. I just kind of was in a hurry all the time. Yeah, well, if that's what matters is you, you know, making that decision to to get back on. And um, yeah, that's that's motivation. That's internal motivation there. Um, and we'll, let's connect after so I can figure out the meal delivery okay. system for you after, because I want you to be able to have meals for the week too. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right, does anyone else have any other questions here? Sue, are you are you um, trying to ask us a question? You're on mute. If you are, there we go. There can you, you hear go. me now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Um, a, a coworker um, did your program, and that's where I heard about this. And um, I'm very interested in getting started and trying this lifestyle of eating because I do have high cholesterol and I can't tolerate any medications. Um, so the easiest way maybe would be to just start incorporating buying your meals and, and incorporating them and replace my lunches and dinners with your meals. Well, I'm of course going to share with you the best option and that's to do our program combined with uh, nutrition coaching and the meals. That way you get the guidance to um, start right off the bat. Because what we do is we actually, when you sit down with a dietitian, you actually do get the nutritional guidance in terms of like, you know, what to eat for breakfast and your snacks, um, lunches and dinners, timing, portion sizes. You also get guidance in terms of like making sure that we're incorporating enough nutrients throughout the day for you. So calculating all of that. So that's, and there are also nutrients of deficiency. We provide education and tools for you to be successful along the way. So, you know, that's not to say people haven't been successful during our meals on their own. You're just going to be more successful and uh, feel like you have a more sense of a direction um, in terms of transitioning. And that's, you know, that's the best route that I think um, most people like Anne, Barbara, Eileen have done our, our program and they can, um, they can share more on that, but it has been very, very helpful for them along the way, along with, you know, our other clients. Okay. So I'll just sign up on your website for that 20 minute um, information thing. Okay. Yes, right, and then Mike, Mike, um, Mike, who's on the line, he's our uh, one of our co-founders and and our CEO. He's on the line, so he'll actually be the one reaching out to you. Do you want to say hello, Mike? Hi, Sue. <laughs> hi, hi. I, I, I yeah. watched your uh, testimonial and stuff on your website, so I I was kind of checking that all out. So I think I'm ready to get started. Terrific. Yeah, we'll um, we'd be happy to set up a consultation and, and find the best path for you. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thanks to Jen and Kendra. Great job today. I learned yep. a lot. It was wonderful. And Thank great you. to see everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mary and I got your message, so I will be reaching out to you. So does anyone else have any other questions, comments? 
Okay, well, with that, um, we want to thank you again for participating. Our next um, webinar session will be on nutrition for 50 and older. So that's specifically talking about um, nutrition for, for older adults. So if you're interested in attending that session for yourself, for someone else, and inviting a friend, um, we highly encourage you to attend that session next month. It will be uh, June 24th, which is a Thursday at lunchtime. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank, Thank you.